Hello everybody, it's Timothy Torres, aka Double T Man 2423, and today we're going to be talking about none other than the greatest driver in NASCAR, Kevin Harvick. Nicknamed the Closer, nicknamed Happy Harvick. This driver has been one of the best drivers out there in NASCAR, and this will be his this has been a great year for Kevin Harvick, even though his last win was well, we'll get to that in a moment. But we just want to look at some of the highlights and go over a couple of Kevin Harvick's greatest moments in NASCAR. Everything he's done and everything he's did for the sport, he's actually done a very good job. Racing with RCR, racing with Stuart Haas Racing, it's been a great journey for him. He started racing trucks, Xfinity, and of course racing in the west coast of NASCAR. Ever since then, he's been really good at trying to prove that he can certainly belong in NASCAR also. This highlight here was taken, of course, from my camera. And of course, this was the 2010 Talladega race where Harvick beated Jimmy McMurray on the final closing laps of Talladega Super Speedway. A charging move and a side-by-side -side pass would be very good. It would end up being one of the best moments of NASCAR that Kevin Harvick would end up winning that race. During this time, he still continued to show his uh, best foot for RCR and the team. How was he in, RCR, in Richard Childress Racing? Well, back in 2001, after the death of Dale Earnhardt, NASCAR would decide to, you know, pay their respects to Dale. Ever since then, it was then that Kevin Harvick would be selected into RCR's uh, new driver's um, lineup. And the three would end up not running anymore in NASCAR. And it would be transformed and repainted into the famous number 29 that Kevin Harvick has been racing. Harvick came up from the NASCAR Xfinity Series, or what was called the uh, NASCAR Bush Series at the time and he would get multiple wins in a championship. A very nice way to start off a fresh season and for a rookie coming up from Bakersfield, California. That's right, Harvick's a California driver. And he's been very good. And Richard Childress himself was even impressed by Harvick's uh, talent that he decided to put him in the race car. His first start came back in 2001 at Rockingham Motor Speedway. Winston Cup debut of Kevin Harvick. Mike Skinner and there, Kevin Harvick, tapped to drive the Richard Childress car. Richard has said the number three will not be used. It's on a moratorium for the balance of this season, and a black number three will never be raced again out of the Childress Racing Shop. So here this car is in white and with the first available number that does not contain a three, 29. At Atlanta Motor Speedway, he would also get his first ever NASCAR victory, beating out, of course, my favorite driver, Jeff Gordon, and would beat him by a side-by-side -side inch finish close in the race, winning it for the RCR team. That win gave a lot of respect to all the fans and everybody thought, thinking that Harvick is the next Dale Earnhardt. And of course, the number three was also waved to the crowd as well in Dale Earnhardt's memory. Kevin Harvick, Richard Childress, and the whole team was very emotional that day. And Kevin did a great job. But that wasn't the end of it. Harvick would continue racing and even doing the same side-by-side -side move in the Daytona 500 in 2007. Watch this. Almost, he almost squeezed Harvick into the wall, and here comes Harvick, the 29, with Matt Kenseth. Oh, Mark got loose. Mark got loose. And Harvick's getting a run off turn four. It's going to be a drag race all the way back to the start-finish line. No caution. They're side by side, right to the line. Big crash. Here they come. Checkered flag. That moment, Kevin Harvick became a Daytona 500 winner, and with RCR as well. 
Harvick would continue racing with RCR from 2001 through 2013. Afterwards, when Harvick realized that, you know, RCR wasn't giving him much respect, he decided to go his separate ways with Richard Childress himself. Ever since then, Kevin Harvick had been now in the number four race car for Tony Stewart's team, which is called Stewart Haas Racing. He felt like he wasn't really, you know, getting the recognition that he wanted. But, you know, a couple of these wins really, you know, meant something to him. And we can all know that Harvick did the best. And obviously Harvick was famous for all of that. But what was really most famous was he winning in the 2014 NASCAR Spring Cup Series champion. Now that one was a crown jewel that he will never forget also. And he celebrated with him, the team, and the family, giving Stewart his another title for the team. We're on the last lap. One more down. One more. If the caution comes out now, the race is over. Newman trying to stay with Harvick, trying to find a way around him. Two more corners to go to a championship for Kevin Harvick. He's going to win the race and the NASCAR Spring Cup Championship. California's Kevin Harvick does it. Holy cow! You are the 2014 Spring Cup Champion. If Ryan Newman gotten past Harvick, Newman would have won the championship. However, Harvick was just too fast and had multiple wins that season in 2014 for Tony Stewart. And at that time, Kevin Harvick continued to win races for Tony Stewart until he started to get a little bit, you know, uh, well, Father Time would end up catching Harvick. Afterwards, Kevin Harvick would still continue to race no matter what. At that moment, Harvick was, you know, feeling like his time... His uh, whole winning streak was starting to get loose, was starting to go away from him. Everything that Harvick has worked on has been very great. And he's been one heck of a driver and a future Hall of Famer, in my opinion. And definitely a champion that is definitely going to be recognized forever. But in 2022, he would end up winning two more races at Michigan International Speedway and his 60th career victory at Richmond, which of course was his final ever victory in NASCAR in 2022. Distance. Now, one lap to go, presented by Credit One Bank. Kevin Harvick, no traffic. The 20 has closed the gap. He's within five car lengths of Kevin Harvick as they come to the final turn. Bell, just not enough time. Kevin Harvick is going to win at Richmond. He goes back to back. Yeah, boy, great job. Great job. 60 career wins for Kevin Harvick. As you see Bell come up behind him. He was just that close, but that 60 career wins ties him with Kyle Busch for ninth all time. Finally got us one at this joint. I appreciate it. Yeah, great job, guys. Way to adjust on that thing from the beginning. <laughs> you said it. So we go forever without winning, and then you went two in a row. 2022 was one of the Harvick's best seasons ever. And then after 2020, and then starting the beginning of 2023, it would later soon come that Kevin Harvick would retire in 2023. He never won a race after that. That one race where Harvick would end up getting would be his last. In my, in my mind, I would have thought Harvick uh, would at least get one victory or at least two. 
and would at least uh, just go for a playoff championship. However, 2023 just didn't have so much. Instead, he would run his final ever NASCAR race at Phoenix International Speedway, where he would get his where he has most wins over there at Phoenix. And everyone respects him for that. Cup Series start. You know, he admitted, I haven't really shown much emotion until this week. And I asked Rodney Childers about that, and he said that emotion came out Monday night in a team dinner. Childers told me that Harvick got about one sentence into his team speech and started crying. Rodney said they all looked at each other and said, we've never seen him have emotion like this. We didn't know how to react, but that shows you how much his race team means to him. Jeff, you've been through this before. What was that final start like for you? What's the emotion on this day? Hey, knowing I'm not going to be in a cup car anymore. You put your whole life into it, Marty. You grew up as a kid dreaming to be able to drive a race car, and you've had the unbelievable opportunity to do it. And it's hard to imagine a life without it. And as you get closer, the reality of that starts stepping up into your brain. Like, what am I going to do next? What hole is going to be left inside of me when, when I don't have this anymore? And it is a scary situation for a race car driver, especially someone like Kevin Harvick that has put so much into it. Yeah. Kevin Harvick has been racing in NASCAR for 23 years. His final finish came at Phoenix in the seventh place. And he would end his career with 826 races, 60 victories, 251 top, 251 top fives, Top 10s, 444, and 31 poles. Kevin Harvick has raced a long career in his life. He's made a couple of enemies on track as well, but none of that matters. Harvick did everything as a driver, and that's just to race. And Kevin Harvick is definitely a great driver in my eye. And will forever be remembered as the number four or the 29, or however you want to remember Kevin Harvick, he definitely is a NASCAR driver to forever remember. Thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you all next time.